For a long time, there has been a brand that has been requested in the comments. I have held off for a while, but finally, we will be looking at some Aki USB power adapters. I went ahead and picked up a reasonably wide range of adapters, from 20 watts to 65 watts, although the 20 watt never showed up. This is why I don't often buy these, but that's a whole other story. So I ended up with 30 to 65 watts, still a good range of power adapter. Wait, that's 72 watts. The biggest question I have when buying these is whether or not they have a safety listing. I think that is the biggest issue I will have with these adapters, but you have to watch to find out which ones have it and which ones don't. The performance of course is on the menu and I fully expect them to be power adapters. They are less expensive so the value proposition may be the reason to pick one of these up. Let's check all that out and more. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power adapter do I want to get? The videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors to see how each one stacks up. If you want to help out the channel, see the links on my webpage or in the description. Patreon is now live as well as the super button. Thanks to my current patrons and channel supporters. First up is the Aki 30 watt power hub XL with 12 AC outlets and five USB ports. I'm going to call this the can adapter from now on. Plug adapter, add socket, nah, can adapter it is. This is a big adapter. It has a button on top with an LED ring that lights up when you push the button. I wish it had a mechanical power switch. The user manual for this one lets us know what this thing can do. And it's a can. You can plug things into it. We get the key to the warranty. You have to see the sailboat or else you can't claim the warranty, so you better stare at this for a while. I actually have no idea how the customer service is. If you've dealt with them, leave it in the comments. The data is fairly clear on what it can supply for power, 5 volts only. It can do 3 amps on the USB-C port, so 15 watts, and it can do 2.4 amps or 12 watts on the USB-A port. Total, not to go over 30 watts. On the bottom of this adapter, no safety listing. Here are some examples of the logos I am typically looking for from three different companies' adapters. These are for the US and Canada markets though. This CAN adapter does have a six in a circle, which is the claim of meeting energy efficiency claims for power adapters from the Department of Energy. Okay, time to look at the overall data for this one. This is awful. It uses way too much idle power. The efficiency for a modern device is bad. There really isn't much going on for this one. It obviously doesn't meet the claim of DOE or any part of it. This does have a click when you hit the button, so there is a relay inside, so some circuit is keeping this active and using too much power. Many power savings devices with soft power use a latching relay so they can not consume so much power to switch on and off. Obviously this was out of the budget for this one and they didn't bother. Skip with vengeance. Off to a great start so far. Next up is the Aki 32 watt Swift Series 2 port PD wall charger. This adapter doesn't look too bad. It does come with a 2 meter USB C to C cable. We'll test that out in the USB cables round 4 video. I need to get on that. So many cables. The adapter has a 6 in a circle, so claiming energy efficiency compliance. The adapter has a TUV mark, but only for the Japanese market. So it has some safety listing at least. This is a good step above none. The information is fairly clear on what it can supply for power and modes of operation. The device can supply the standard USB PD modes of 5, 9, and 12 volts. This is really a phone charger only. The USB A port can only support 5 volt modes. The power is split between the two ports so there is no renegotiation of modes. It's like two adapters in one. As expected, no programmable modes. Okay. Data time again. First thing I noticed with this adapter is it's good idle performance, even if it is on the noisy side, and it's also reasonably efficient for a small adapter. This isn't going to win any awards, but for a phone, moderate paced phone charging or a watch charger, it will work. The DC voltages were stable and looked good, so another win. This does meet the energy efficiency standards as well. Okay, so a little redemption for Aki. Let's move on. Next up is the Aki 72 watt USB-C desktop charging station. Okay, stepping things up a little bit, we get some more power. This adapter is quite a bit larger and it only has two ports. I have a good idea of what is inside of this one. It's two adapters in one box. I've seen this before. This adapter does have a weird twangy sound when you knock on the side of the case. A little unusual, but heatsink or something must be singing. Definitely don't want to excite that vibrational mode. This thing will ping to bits. The device can supply the standard USB PD modes of 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volts on the USB-C port, up to 60 watts. No programmable modes. And the USB-A port is a 12 watt, 5 volt only port. The adapter does not renegotiate power since the two ports are essentially separate. The adapter does not have a safety listing. 
but it does have the claim of the energy efficiency compliance. The adapter has good idle performance and high efficiency. There are adapters that are better, but it is a reasonable set of data. This one, I think, will be coming down to the pricing. If it is cheap enough, then maybe it is worth it. The DC voltage looks good and the adapter does meet energy efficiency standards. It is strictly average. It would be nice if it had a safety listing. What a wishy-washy review. Some good, some bad. Next up is the Aki 36 watt wall charger. This is a two port all USB-C adapter. It has shifting modes and renegotiation on plug and unplug of devices. The data is fairly clear on what it can supply for power and modes of operation. The device can supply the standard USB PD modes of 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volts up to 30 watts on one port. With two ports, it can do up to 12 volts, so no laptops with both ports used. The device lacks any PPS modes. Again, no safety listing. The claim of Department of Energy 6, again. Okay, data time, again. This device actually doesn't meet the requirements for idle power usage. It is still on the lower side, but as the adapters get smaller, this requirement decreases, and this is too much for an adapter with as many watts, so this is an immediate fail. The efficiency is actually low enough to not meet that requirement as well, so this one is not good. No safety listing, poor power performance, all the downsides, and no upsides. Skip. And finally, the last of this group, the Aki 65 watt PD wall charger. Well, things are going mostly poorly at this point, so I don't really expect much here. No safety listing, claim of the Department of Energy standard, you get two ports. The user manual does have something interesting, and that is the claim of GANFAST, which is a technology from Navitas. This would mean the adapter should have class leading power efficiency, so this is something to check. The device can supply the standard USB PD modes of 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volts, all the way up to 65 watts on one USB-C port. The USB-A port can do 5 volts and 2.4 amps, so the usual 12 watts. No programmable power supply modes. Okay, finally, overall data for the last device. This adapter has good idle performance and it does have very high efficiency for a tiny power adapter, so it may be true to its word with the GANFAST technology in the box. The voltage was stable. The efficiency standards are easily met here. I wish this had a safety listing. It seems to be the general story for this company. If they can sell the product, why bother, right? Overload is testing when the device is safely shut down when too much power is drawn. This can happen from a short circuit or a misbehaving device. Here are the overload values for each of these adapters. They are all within safe limits and all recovered without needing to be unplugged or plugged back in. Nice. Okay. Time to get to some weights on these adapters. The packaging for all these adapters was pretty standard, except the big one, which was still reasonably lightweight. The gang missed the boat on being green, as claimed on the packaging, by still covering most of these in plastic. One was definitely sold, used, missing the user manual and all. These adapters were pretty standard fare. The desktop adapter obviously weighed more, but still not unreasonable. Power factor correction is a technique to consume AC power more efficiently. The higher the power factor, the lower the comparable current and therefore the lower the loss in wires and transformers that supply your power. The goal is to have all the waves look like the same shape as the yellow line, a sine wave. Here, and as expected, none of these power adapters have power factor correction, so they have quite unusual wave shapes. This matters more as you plug in more devices or if you have sensitive equipment. 65 watts is actually slightly better than some of the others, but yeah, still not up to what I want to use. Okay. Time to compare the data with a bunch of other adapters. I pulled in a range of different wattage adapters to give some points of comparison. Not a lot though. When comparing the idle data with the others, these adapters are all excellent in power usage except one. The 32 watt is noisier than the others, so has lower power quality. These do span quite a range with the CAN adapter being utterly useless. It is called a latching relay. The others are okay. On the idle graph, these adapters all cluster up when you add in the less efficient power consumer CAN adapter. These are all looking good otherwise. Two out of three of these adapters did not meet the energy efficiency standard for idle requirement. When comparing the overall data with other adapters, the story shifts around a little. The wattage values bounce around since these are all different ratings. The CAN adapter was terrible in all aspects and the others are okay. The standout here is the 65 watt adapter with its very high efficiency, which makes me think it is using the reference design from Navitas with GANFAST technology. 
On the average power consumption graph, the data is spread out more. The can is missing from the data. I don't know, there was some bug, it just would not show up. I guess it knows better that it was a bad power adapter. Anyway, the others look like they all have fairly good power performance. The 36 watt was just outside of the requirement though. Let's talk about value. This is where things are interesting. The lower price point on these adapters does mean they represent better value in three cases. Even versus the relatively inexpensive Amazon Basic 65 watt adapter, the Aki looks good. No safety listing though, so you decide what you need on that. The power performance is there though. The desktop adapter and CAN adapter don't represent great value. Well, Aki is checked off the list. They make power adapters. These are a little less expensive and they are lacking in some areas. I am struggling to find the difference here. They are all kind of the same, again. These adapters have various operational modes and they don't have safety listings, all but one case for one country, not for the market they are selling in, of course. Performance wise, the 65 watt did stand out for its power efficiency. The can adapter is a trash can. I'd rather it was just a power strip, although it seems cool. It isn't so great to have the power cords coming off in all directions though. The soft on off, as we've seen in other adapters, is a bug more than a feature. The other adapters I can really say is maybe worth it is the 32 watt adapter, which is a phone only device, but it is two ports, so phone and watch, or phone and other accessory, but obviously cost wasn't an issue for acquiring a safety listing. As this is the cheapest of the lot, it has some safety listing at least. As with other companies like Ugreen, I have heard positive and negatives, and overall people seem to like them, but I don't think I will be checking them out again for a while on the power adapter side. I do have power banks though. Okay, time to apply the stickers. These are tested and on the database, so you can look at how they compare. Thanks for watching. I haven't been getting quite as many videos out as I need to, but there is a real job to attend to, so some things take longer than others. Check out my website for upcoming videos. There's a constantly changing schedule of release dates. I have too many more of these adapters to get through, so many more videos in the future. Goodbye.